The Body Church is dedicated to proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ through authentic worship, Bible study, and service. Located in Atlanta, we're called to create a loving and caring community for all people and work together for justice and truth in our world. Recognizing that our spiritual journeys are all different, we strive to help people discover where they fit and pursue their purpose in Christ. If you've been searching for a place where real people with real problems are searching for genuine solutions, The Body Church may very well be the perfect fit. Visit thebodychurchinc.org for service times or call us if you have any questions. All right, so we just went to a conference last weekend at IHOP, the 10 conference, and heard them saying all kinds of stuff from what we've been teaching for the last while. So you know we didn't copy it, because we've been teaching it since last year. And to hear them bring up that this is the prayer that God wants us to pray, that prayer that Jesus prayed. To hear them saying that that is the prayer. We were like, all right, look, that's the Lord. And we have been, we've been on point. And I think that was, for me personally, that was very, very encouraging and very moving because here are people who you know hear God's voice and they hear it clearly. These are people who have a reputation for revelation. I mean, and that's a reputation to have. You see what I'm saying? So for us to be able to, to be on the same wavelength as they are, I mean, I'm blown away. So, let's do what we do. Let's talk about unity. So our goal is the unity of the faith. Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. Let's read it together on the screen. After three, two, three. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, this is our assignment. Let's read it together. The assignment of the fivefold ministry gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, continues until the entire church is unified in the faith. So we understand that that is the basis of this message. The unity of the faith. Jesus' prayer for unity. John 17, 9-23. I mean, I listen to people that we look up to in the ministry see that the Lord has spoken and this is the prayer. I mean, that thing blew me away. To hear them say that. And I was like, you know what? We have been playing that prayer every Sunday for how long? This is like part 21 of this series. And we have been drilling this thing home. And to hear them say, you know what the Lord is saying now? We gotta have unity. We gotta be one. This is what the Lord is saying. That the body of Christ gotta be a real body. That the prayer of John 17, 9. Because anybody's gonna talk about unity or the body of Christ. There's so many scriptures you can use. There's other scriptures. But for them to say John 17, that that's the prayer. That's what was on God's heart. It made me sit down and say, you know what, Donald, there's a couple of y'all with some great chairs in a little office building. You know what I'm saying? With a, a, a little body shop with some cups of coffee and hot chocolate and some muffins. <laughs> I mean, seriously. And y'all just, who, I mean, who, 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 who are you guys? And for y'all to be on point with what God's doing before. I'm saying before, not at the same time and not after. 
Because in everybody can do it after. Anybody can watch it and be like, well, sweet. Well, that's what the Lord's saying. Let me go teach that now. Anybody can do that. That's easy. But to be doing that ahead of time and then hear confirmation, I don't know, I know what, what beats that. I mean, that is winning. Truly. If you want to tell me winning, that is winning. Yeah. That's, that, that's the Lord saying, keep doing what you're doing. You all do what you do. At least you know you're hearing from God. At least you know that whoever's with you, they're hearing from God ahead of everybody else. Because everybody's hot and sweating about that now. We like 21 weeks ahead of the game. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. That blew my mind. Like, I, my mind's been blown before, but that blew my mind. Like, I was, I was rocked. I walked out there, I was like, what just happened? I mean, they all in the middle of the situation. Especially if you turn on TV and you turn on all these things, that's not what people are preaching right now. So for, for the Lord to come and say that like that, and it's totally outside of the norm of what's being said, you know yeah. only God could have done that. Because yeah. you outside here as an outlier, and then here comes another outlier saying, hey, that's what the Lord's saying. You're like, all right, that's what the Lord's saying. You see what I'm saying? Amen. That's why I was like, you know what, let's just do this. We're not half-stepping. Let's go to John 17, 9 to 23. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I've given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who, you will, who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you give me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you give me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you sent me, and I have declared to them your name, and will declare it. That the love which you love me may be in them, and I in them. So when Jesus knew that the time of his death was imminent, he prayed one of the most important prayers he had ever prayed. He prayed for unity in his body. And contain in that prayer our secrets for divine unity. Again, I sat down this weekend and just listened to some of the greatest teachers and you know spiritual leaders of our time and just hear them talk about the scripture. And, and I just said to myself, I said, Lord, one thing I was happy about was that all of these weeks we kept repeating the scripture. That we didn't just start with it and then just went running and went along and, and you know, kind of assumed everybody understands that this is what we're talking about, right? But we said it once, let's just move on. No, but every Sunday we get here, we, we read the scripture. Every Sunday we get here, we watch that video and we keep going over and over and over the same thing. And I remember when I first started the, the series, in my mind I was thinking, you know, let me get a fresh video every week. Let me get something else. Let's do something different. Let's, we're going to talk about something different. Let's mix it up. And this is the first time I've ever done that. I'm always a fresh guy. Fresh video, fresh message, fresh everything. And the law was just like, this is the only video you're going to show. One prayer. And I believe 
we're going to start hearing it a lot more now. As it has it, as it been said over the weekend now, we're going to start hearing it a lot more. A lot. The talk is going to start building about the body of Christ needs to be one. We need to unify. That's what Jesus wants. That's what Jesus said. That's what needs to happen. That's going to be the buzz. And you know how it goes in the church. Once the right people pick it up, everybody else is going to follow. You see what I'm saying? And I, I just feel like I had to drive home that this is what God's saying. And we're right in the middle of the action. Everybody understands that? Right here. Nonetheless, we're going to do what we do. Jesus' secrets of unity. Let's go through this list together. From number one. After three. Two, three. Number one. The name of Christ unites. Number two. God's word sets us apart. Number three. Our mission unites us. Number four. We are only one in him. Number five. God's glory unites us. Number six. Unity testifies of Jesus. Number seven. The love of Christ unites us. God's glory makes us one. John 17, 22 to 23. Let's read it together after three, two, three. And the glory which you give me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. Yeah. So God's glory makes us one. As a result... It's important for God's glory to be evident among us if we are to experience true unity. I'll tell you last, last night, no, right, last weekend, that worship, I, I, I stood up in that place and I remember just saying, God, let your glory fall in this place today. Because that worship was so, yeah, whatever the word is, I don't even know how to say it. I could feel the power of God. I feel the presence of God. And I was like, I just need to drink this thing. And I need, I need this. Everybody else, I don't know. Some people could be like, oh my God, whatever. I was like, I need this right now. I was like, Lord, your glory had to fall in this place today. And the, 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 the minister came up, um, Lou Engel, and introduced himself a little bit and then said a couple of things about you know, what God's doing in the country, in the world, etc. And then he says, is there like a, uh, somebody to play the keyboard? You know, let, let's pray, let's pray. And he just went. I mean, just, I mean there's no, there's no buildup. He has no buildup. He just has a switch. He's like, let's pray. And it just starts. And somebody just comes out of nowhere and just, the band just kind of scrambles out and just goes straight back to the music and they just start praying one time. I said, everybody just start praying. I mean, just start praying. I mean, that, the Prince of the Lord. I mean, that was, I, have a, I can't tell you the last time I experienced, I experienced with the Lord like that. Like, that thing left me. I was all over the place. I just kind of, I came out today. I couldn't even think. I couldn't talk. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I couldn't discuss concepts. I, they had a reception for pastors after where all the pastors could go up there and we could meet Lou Engle and stuff like that. And I, I couldn't even talk. I didn't, I, everybody's chatting. And, and I'm just like, I can't even think. I was like, what just happened there? What, what did I just see? What did I just experience? What did I just feel there? That was ridiculous. And I said to myself, I said, Donald Duncan, the glory of God is going to fall right where you are. Yeah. I was like, it, it, it could just be us. And that's just fine by me. Whatever it takes. I'm like, we're going to get that. And we're going to get that encounter with the Lord because when we have those kind of encounters with the Lord, stuff happens. And you hear stuff. You get answers. I sat down there on Tuesday night and the presence of the Lord was strong and the worship was great and the Lord just spoke to me about some things. And I just moved on it and I believe that's going to turn into something. And it's concerning the church. And I believe that's why we have to go hard after the atmosphere for God. But we have to go hard after the glory of God because God wants to do some stuff. And our human effort is so futile at getting it done. And we can try as hard as we want. We've got to get this. God's glory makes us one. And as a result, it's important for God's glory to be evident among us if we are to experience true unity. Listen, anyway, so what is God's glory? What's the Hebrew word? Come on. Which is God's substance, his essence, his heavy presence. When God shows up in his glory, everyone present feels the weight of it. I felt God's glory Friday night. I was like, that is God's glory. I felt the presence of the Lord and it was heavy and it was serious and it was intense. And I, I was like, one of the things I saw was when, when everybody in the room 
decides to go after God for real together and people get serious, God can't help but respond. You gotta go after God. You go after God, God's gonna respond. You can't not have an experience with the Lord when everybody goes after God together. Everybody understands that? This stuff is this stuff is intense. Anyway, may we continue? What's the Greek word for God's glory? Doxa. That's what I'm talking about. God is on point. You see, we have a young prophet here. The unspoken manifestation of God. God shows up. You know God's in the building. You're like, mm, God is so in this building. He is so in this building. And you could feel the presence of God. Today, I felt the presence of the Lord. Today, I felt like, you know what? This is what we want. This is what we want. We didn't get to the first song on the list. Right. And that's fine. We didn't need that song. We didn't need the song. We didn't need the songs. The Lord had his own song. And that's what we want. We want the song of the Lord. Yeah, well, we, we had to, to start taping them, yeah. which, we will, yeah. which we will start taping. And, yeah, speaking of that, we're going to figure that out. What we want to do is, as we're singing it, start writing the words so that we'll have them in the slides and just keep it. So we'll have the words already there because that, that's what we're doing. That's, that's where we're at. Because our desire right now is the glory of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. That's what we care about. We, everything else, it is what it is, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because everything else, no matter how hard we try, we can't make it happen. So we might as well just get the glory of the Lord. And one thing we know we can do is worship God. That's what we can do. And we can worship Him with whatever we have. We can make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We can do that. Because nobody can tell me, you know, you can go to some of those tribes in the jungle, wherever that's worshiping God. They don't have ele all the fancy electronics and all the fancy instruments and whatever. They do what they have to do. And they make what they make and they make a joyful noise and the power of God descends on them. And you can go all over the world and people getting healed and delivered and miracles taking place and stuff's happening. Amazing stuff. And we have the technology. We have the lights. We have the luxury. And I'm just like, what's holding us back? from going hard after God so that God can move in an amazing way. The unspoken manifest manifestation of God. The unspoken manifestation of God. The divine quality of God. God's infinite intrinsic word, the doxa of God. You know, I, I just feel like God, God's really ministering to us about His glory. You know, you know when somebody invites themselves into your house? Well, hey, you just want to, you know, when is when you guys gonna invite us over? It's, I can feel like God's inviting Himself. He's like, so when you guys gonna have my glory? When you guys want me to show up? I'm like, uh, okay. I mean, if you if you if you wanna come, hey, that's cool. We take it, you know. You know, it's like, cause he, I mean, we can insist, or he can insist. He can be like, look, uh, I think you guys need my glory. I'm just saying. You know, I've been waiting for y'all to ask. So let me go ahead and start prodding you. So when you go ask my presence, when you guys want me to show up, when you guys want to experience it with me, that's going to rock your world. Who wants, who, wants, who, wants, who wants a piece of this? You know, it's like he's inviting himself into the place. And when God starts doing that, just as, and which is amazingly, that's the word that Helton Asher said today. When, when you said to my heart, and my heart heard you say, come and talk with me, you are the one who extended the invitation. You said, come and talk with me. And my heart says, Lord, I am coming. God's like, so who wants, who wants this glory? I mean, who, who's trying to get some of this glory? And I was looking around like, I don't know. He's like, who wants some of this glory? I mean, y'all, y'all want some of this? Come get some of this glory. And I'm just like, we're going to get this glory. We can't, I mean, we, 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 we can't control anybody else, but at least we know in this little place here that we have, we gonna get this glory, right there. This upper room we have here, where 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 where, the, where we can fit the the disciples. I was like, we we gonna get that glory right here. Let the Holy Ghost fall right here. Let that fire come right here. We we good with that. Everybody understand that? Anyway, let's get to some some meat and potatoes here. What can we do to invite God's glory? Number one, let's read it together. Pursue a deeper relationship with Him. Draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. That is the easiest, lowest hanging fruit in the Bible. Yep. You want God to come close to you, then you come close to him. Yeah. What else are you looking for? Draw nigh through the word. Draw nigh through worship. Draw nigh through your life. You do what you have to do to get close to God, and God will respond by getting close to you. Everybody understand that? 
Number two, what's that? Join together in agreement. Everybody knows the scripture says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. You want the presence of the Lord? Get some people to gather in the name of Jesus. Get some people who say, listen, the only reason why we're here is to worship Jesus. And why did he put it right in the same place as the other scripture that says, two or three agree as touching anything, it is done. Because they go together. He's like, two or three agree as touching anything, it's done. Two or three gathered in my name, I'm there. Yeah. I'm there, and ask me, together, it's done. And he's like, that's what I'm talking about. Where that scripture says, be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. What we saw in heaven, the angel has the censer, and it has both the prayers of the saints and incense. It's like the worship. We're like, let's put some incense in the angel's hands. Let's put some prayers in the angel's hands. God does the rest. You get fire from the altar. You get smoke. You get whatever he needs. But we, we have two parts in that process. We could worship. We can pray. And we're like, all right, God, you're done. And just like we were saying, I was listening to it over this weekend. What did they say? God, God gathers up those prayers like a cloud and it, it fills it and fills it and fills it. And when he's ready, he responds. That's exactly what we said. We said, he gathers it up. And we said, when he's ready, he's like, look, where, where, where's those prayers in the body, church? Come, angel, bring that for me. Well, no, it's angel. You know, the angel he's talking to. Bring, bring, bring those prayers to me. And, and, and grab, 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 some, grab some fire. Grab, grab some incense. It's about to, we're about to blow something up. You see what I'm saying? Which is why nothing is by chance that happens on this earth. Too much praying been going on. Too much worship been going on. Everything is strategic. And I'm just like, we got to open our eyes. That's one of the reasons why we're going to start talking about the time of the end. And we're going to start talking about it for real. Because stuff is happening. And stuff's happening on our nose. And I think that's really what rocked me last, last week. I heard the minister talk about stuff that happened last year that changed the course of history that I, I didn't notice. It just happened. I mean, I knew about it, but whatever. And I was like, wow, did I miss all of these things that just, these signs of the end that were just right in front of my face? And I'm like, what we're not going to do is miss anything anymore. Everybody understands? We're going to be those guys. You know, there's always going to be those guys. Those guys who are paying attention to every headline, who are paying attention to every scripture. We're going to be those guys. Everybody understands that? It is what it is. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to be those guys. Let's talk about prayer. We started last week. We started the week before talking about prayer. And let's get to another dimension of prayer. The Holy Spirit helps us pray. Romans 8, 26. Let's read Romans 8, 26, New Living Translation on the screen together. Continuing from last week, where we, the point last week is, heartfelt prayer invites God's glory. Heartfelt prayer invites God's glory. And the other points are, true worship invites God's glory, faith invites God's glory, and purity of heart invites God's glory. Let's talk about heartfelt prayer, how it invites God's glory. Last week we said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And we talked about how, two weeks ago, how Solomon prayed. And when he was finished praying, the glory of God filled the temple. Then we talked about how the church, when they first started, and persecution began, they prayed. And then the glory of God showed up and God shook the room and the Holy Spirit fell on them and everybody started talking in tongues and they got bold, all kind of stuff happened. But now we're talking about prayer a little deeper. We're going to keep going because the thing is, if you're going to go after something, you might as well go for it. We're going to be for real. The Holy Spirit helps us pray. Everybody stays out and we say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Helps, us helps us pray. Romans 8, 26. Let's read it together on the screen. New Living Translation after three. Two, three. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. So, we know the Holy Spirit helps us pray. One of the ways 
the Holy Spirit helps us pray is he sees us trying the best we can and he gets involved and he prays for us. And that's good because the Bible is actually saying, you know what, we're not that good at praying. The King James Version says, for we know not how to pray as we ought to. And this is the, the Apostle Paul writing that. So he says, even I, I don't know how to pray. And none of us on Apostle Paul's level. And he's saying, we don't know how to pray as we ought to. I mean, I'm sure we could do what we can, but we're not that good. You see, prayer is not something we're automatically good at. Our human ability to pray is essentially worthless. If we want our prayer life to get to the level where we see God's glory, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. And I can tell you that for real. You ever met somebody who's n not really had a, a true experience with the Lord and you ask them to pray? And when they pray, you're like, wow. Yeah, prayer does not come naturally, does. And you're like, until you get a, a relationship and an encounter with the Lord, your prayer is, is very, very weak. You don't know what you're saying. You just kind of yeah, just kind of follow what you heard somebody else say. But then you can meet somebody who the Holy Spirit has touched and who has had an encounter with the Lord and say, you pray. And you can tell the difference instantly. This person has the Holy Spirit helping them pray. That person does not. Two completely different calibers of prayer. Because when you try to pray in your own strength, it's not strong. Because prayer is something spiritual. That's a whole different level. And we just can't do that right. Because I guess people say, well, it's talking with God. Yes, true, but there's a spiritual dimension to it because God is a spirit. And prayer has to go beyond you just talking. you got to have the Holy Spirit directing what you're saying. What you're saying got to get beyond just saying whatever. There is a power to prayer when the Holy Spirit gets involved with the prayer. That takes it to a whole different level. And that's what we're talking about today. Everybody understands that? Let's not talk about praying in the Spirit. You know we have to go there at some point. We can't dance around reality. You know we've got to go there at some point. So we might as well make that some point today. Pray in the Spirit. Everybody say this together after three, two, three. Pray in the Spirit. Jude chapter 1, 20 to 21. New King James Version. Jude chapter 1, 20 to 21. Let's read it together on the screen. After three, two, three. But you, beloved... Building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So here's what the scripture says. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So here the scripture is saying, you build yourself up on your most holy faith when you're praying in the Holy Spirit. So when I begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, I build myself up in my most holy faith. I strengthen myself. I edify myself. I increase myself spiritually. My faith doesn't get any higher than the faith I have when I am praying in the Holy Spirit. So here is what you're saying. Beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So I look at myself and I say, I need to build myself up. I need to take this feeble humanity that I operate with and strengthen it and take myself to the next level, I must pray in the Holy Spirit. Everybody understands that? Anybody confused? Anybody thinks that's complex? Mm -hmm. When somebody, when Jesus said, I pray, he, he, he came to Peter and he said, Simon, Simon, the, the devil has come and requested you that, I may, that he may sift you as wheat. 
And then Jesus says, but I have prayed that your faith would not fail. In other words, your faith can fail. That's, that's one of the points that Jesus made very clear there, that you can have faith and it can fail. And as a result, Jesus said, I prayed that your faith wouldn't fail. Yes. But here the Bible says, you can pray in the Holy Spirit and build yourself up on your most holy faith. Where you could build up your faith so that your faith doesn't fail. And you do that by praying in the Holy Spirit. Everybody understand that? So we build ourselves up when we pray in the Holy Spirit. It takes us to a whole different level and strengthens our inner man. Everybody understands that? I pray in the Holy Spirit because it strengthens my inner man. It builds me up. Pray in tongues, which is the same as pray in the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 2 to 4 on the screen. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 2 to 4 on the screen. Let's read it together. After 3, 2, 3. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Now, here's the point here. The Apostle Paul was teaching on the value of prophecy to the body of Christ. And he was explaining that speaking in tongues compared to prophecy is, I would say, for different reasons. For example, he says, when you speak in a tongue, you don't speak to men but to God. Everybody understands that? So, for example, that's why you can use speaking in tongues interchangeably with praying in tongues. Because you're talking to God. So if prayer is communication with God, then speaking in tongues is prayer. So I can instantly know I am talking to God when I pray in tongues. And everybody knows in worship, who is it about? God. It's not about me trying to hear what you're telling me, right? I, w I want to talk to God. You want to talk to God. We all need to talk to God. Because at the end, only God can do anything for us right now. And we need God to hear from us. We want to stand up prayers to heaven. And we want to stand up incense to heaven. Everybody understands that? So as soon as we get into worship, our objective is for God to hear us. Number one. Everybody understands that? But then it says, because nobody understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So I can speak mysteries to God. It's like sweet nothings. I can speak sweet nothings to God that only he understands when I speak in tongues. And I know he's hearing me because I'm saying what he hears. Yeah. Everybody understands that? But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. So we do both. In this church, we believe in prophesying to edify, exhort, and comfort people. Yes. But we also believe in speaking in a tongue not to each other, but to God. And we don't expect anybody else to understand because nobody else needs to understand. Because you, you don't answer my prayer, so you don't have to understand my prayer. Only God, because he's the one who has the answer. Everybody else is just a spectator as God does what he does. Everybody understands that? But look at this. When you prophesy, you edify the person you're prophesying to. But when you speak in a tongue, who do you edify? Yourself. Who do you edify? So I can build myself up in my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. I edify myself when I speak in a tongue. So if I look at my heart, I look at my faith, I look at my life, and I say, I need to strengthen myself. I need to build myself up. Yes. Praying in tongues builds me up. Yes. Everybody understands that? Yes. Prophesying builds up the person I'm prophesying to. Yes. Praying in tongues builds me up personally. Yes. So when I prophesy to you, that don't build me up. That builds you up. Right. And when I pray in tongues, that don't build you up. That builds me up. Mm -hmm. And who needs to be built up? Everybody. <laughs> Everybody, understand that? Everybody needs to be built up. So when I prophesy to you, that's for you. Which is good. But when somebody teaches erroneously, 
that you know what? Forget praying in tongues, prophesying is what we need to do. Then what we do is we cancel out the building that you need for yourself while you sit and wait for a prophetic word to come in your direction. If you need to be built up and you're sitting waiting for somebody to come prophesy to you, you're wasting real time. You're wasting real time. Because you say, no, I need a word, Lord. And, in, and what if nobody give you a word? What you going to do? When, when, when David said, I strengthened myself in the Lord. Yes. Here is the scripture explaining to you how to do that. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And sometimes we, 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 we get very abstract about stuff like that. Well, I encourage myself in the Lord. I just encourage myself. What is that? <laughs> like, I mean, practically, what is that? It's talk. What's the action? How do I really edify myself and strengthen myself in the Lord? If you don't have some kind of act, active action you can do, you're just going to say stuff and it's not going to have any results. If I'm looking at myself and I say, listen, I need to build myself up in the Lord, saying I build myself up in the Lord does not build myself up in the Lord. That's just saying I build myself up in the Lord, which means nothing. When I say, well, I just encourage myself in the Lord, it's just saying I encourage myself in the Lord. What is that? And at the point, we get religious and we just say stuff. And there's no power in what we're saying because we're just quoting what we heard. And it, it means nothing to us because there's no power in quoting what somebody else said. There is no power in it. Until you know how to activate it and make it real for you, you're just talking. Yeah. But one thing we can guarantee is when you pray in tongues, you build up yourself. When you pray in tongues, you edify yourself. And when you prophesy, you edify the church. And the church needs to be edified, and you need to be edified. I want to edify church, but I don't want to be weak while the church edified. So I might be a prophet, and I come and prophesy to everybody, and everybody looking awesome, everybody's strong. That's right, amen, bless the Lord. Am I falling apart? So for me, I, pro I, I, I speak in tongues. For you, I prophesy. And you say to yourself, I prophesy for you, I speak in tongues for me. And when it's just you by yourself in your room, you have nobody to prophesy to. And you might need to be strengthened. Pray in tongues. tongues. Everybody understand that? It's good. Yep. First Corinthians 14, 14 to 15. Let's read this together. Pray in tongues. First Corinthians 14, 14 to 15. After three. Let's read. Two, three. For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying. But I don't understand what I'm saying. Well then, what shall I do? I will pray in the spirit, and I will also pray in words I understand. I will sing in the spirit, and I will also sing in words I understand. So what was the conclusion of the Apostle Paul at the end of all this? He said, you prophesy, you edify the church. You prophesy, people understand. You speak in the spirit, nobody understands. You edify yourself. You speak directly to God. Your spirit prays. So in the end, what's his conclusion? Which one should you do? What's the answer? Pray in spirit and also pray with words. In other words, he says both. Pray in the spirit, which you're not going to understand, which is fine, because I do need to understand what God hears. I, the only person I need to understand is God. And pray in words. It's a win-win. In other words, he's like, listen, this is what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to pray in the spirit. I want you guys to pray in English too. Prophesy and build each other up. Pray in tongues and build yourself up. You want the glory of God to be here? Prophesy and pray in the Spirit. Everybody understand that? So pray in tongues takes place when you give the Holy Spirit complete control of your prayer. He enables you to speak directly to God from your spirit to His Spirit. This type of prayer immediately launches you into the spirit realm. So the scripture says here, for if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. My spirit is praying when I pray in tongues. So as a result, when I pray in tongues, I give the Holy Spirit complete control of my prayer. And he gives me direct access to speak to God, spirit to spirit. My spirit 
communicates with his spirit. Remember the scripture says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I mean, what beats that when your spirit's the one actually worshiping? I mean, what's, what's more spiritual than your spirit doing it? I mean, you can't beat that, right? You can't get more spiritual than your spirit doing it. I mean, that's it. It's like, well, I think we've arrived at being spiritual when your spirit's the one leading the prayer. Yeah. Everybody understand that? Yes. So let's read this together. Because this, 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 I don't want us to, to miss this. Let's read this on the screen. After three, two, three. Praying tongues takes place when you give the Holy Spirit complete control of your prayer. He enables you to speak directly to God from your spirit to his spirit. This type of prayer immediately launches you into the spirit realm. Immediately. We can be in this room and we're saying, look, we want to enter the spirit realm. We want to go beyond this natural terrestrial drab lifestyle and get into the spirit. What's one easy, low-hanging fruit Hit this ball at the park way to immediately enter the spirit realm. Anybody? Pray in tongues. Because immediately your spirit starts praying. And the scripture says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what, what's more spiritual? Than your spirit directing the worship. I mean, anybody can come up with an awesome prayer or an awesome worship that you want to offer to God that you might think is great, that's based on the scripture, which is great. But what beats when your spirit says, I know how to worship God? Spirit to spirit. Let me do this. Everybody understands that? Stand on your feet. We had to stick a little nugget on praying in tongues into this process because we don't want to ever forget that. <sighs> Let's pray. I want you to say this after me. Say in the name of Jesus. My heart is open. To you, Lord. to you, Lord. I heard your word, heard your word. and my heart, my heart is good soil, is good soil. And, there and there will be fruit from your word, from your word. In, my life. in my life. Today, Today I, make a I make a commitment to pray in tongues, pray in tongues as, much as much as I can. As I, can. I, make I make a commitment to immediately, to immediately enter the Spirit by allowing the Holy Spirit to guide my spirit to pray to the Father, spirit to spirit. I yield my members to the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's spend the next couple of minutes praying in tongues. Rabaki <laughs> <laughs> 